Well, welcome creatives, community, kind folks out there. I'm DBJ and I'm your host. Thank you for joining me for yet another world building um, <laughs> conference gathering, um, uh, chat, vlog, what have you. We go for an hour just talking about um, our current project, which is uh, why should we bother role playing in certain time periods? And today we're going to talk about we, we have flowed into high technology and we are going to talk about the solar system. Now, while there are um, there are some uh, mass media things that that delve into our solar system, really, um, this is just a personal point of of a uh, of exploration that I love, and I think there's plenty of fuel uh, for the fire so that we could. You know, if you're someone who really loves science fiction or had thought about using science fiction, and just before we want to jump into the faster than light hyperdrive travel and meet alien races, I think we miss a little something if we don't uh, we don't remain back in our own solar system. So, but before we do that, I like to preamble a little bit and to bring up something uh, Joseph Keenan brought up uh, yesterday in the comment section in the video, he brings up um, a major problem that you're gonna come across as a uh, GM in science fiction, in anything futuristic, modern, all the way up to the, your highest science fiction. And that is the, uh, that's the hacker vehicle problem. And while there are solutions in some uh, RPGs, it still has become a problem. So let, let's let's dive into it a little bit before we we delve into before we leave Earth's orbit uh, and the gravity well and start exploring our own solar system. One of the problems with uh, technology when when game mastering technology is remembering what kinds of technology are available, not just to the players and what's at their disposal, but uh, what's commonly used throughout your world, uh, whether it's just in Earth's orbit, whether it's on Mars, or what have you. Uh, how common is it? Um, how easy is it to fix? Uh, how cheap or expensive is it? Who has access to it? So that can be that can be a little bit, a little bit daunting. Now, the the addition to that, <laughs> foolish Kiwi says, I want to go back to the time where Pluto is a planet. Nah, 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 nah. Pluto lost his membership rights. No, but but really, um, what are the problems with with high technology? Uh, it, it starts out in like the cyberpunk era, but it really extends beyond that. And that is, what do you do with the person that wants to be the hacker and wants to be the pilot, the driver? Um, oftentimes, back in like the uh, mid '80s, early '90s, Shadowrun and Cyberpunk and and all of its derivatives created like a micro game of hacking. And since then, they've tried to really cure that problem. The problem with hacking and the, the computer programmer is that you have a situation where you have, it's like splitting the party, even if you're standing next to each other. And once you split the party, you know, some players will just be sitting back doing nothing while somebody else performs their specialty. An example would be, uh, one player is a sniper, two players are using their guns, somebody draws their sword, they start fighting guards, and the hacker wants to hack into the database. Oftentimes, they, they tried to mimic this with the reality of what hacking is like, which means that, you know, the hacker gets to make 30 hacking rolls while everyone at the table just twiddles their thumbs because they're in, a, in the middle of a firefight and we all know computers move at you know lightning speeds. Or hacking takes 17 minutes and the hacker maybe gets one roll while everyone else gets to make you know their 45 gun, gun toting, um, auto spray, uh, suppressive fire rolls while the hacker sits in the background and twiddles his thumb. 
on top of that, you have like the the pilot, the driver. And I and what I mean by pilot driver, I'm talking about like anyone controlling a robot, a drone, a vehicle of any type, a helicopter, an aerodyne, a ground-based vehicle, a a um a, the spaceship, whatever. When you have the pilot, the pilot tends to be the one making all the piloting roles and everyone else sits back, twiddles their thumbs. And it sounds really good and looks really good in in the context of a book or a graphic novel, something that someone has written, because you get all the the preamble for it, the people talking, the 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 manic, uh, what are you doing? And don't go that way. And the oops and sorries and 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 people having discourse with each other. But but when it comes to the mechanics of the game and those who are invested in it, they kind of sit back twiddling their thumbs. Well, again. In recent era, they have tried to correct that, especially in like Star Trek, the role playing games. Shadowrun has changed that, where instead of just making a parody in terms of the of the of the gaming rules, right? If I may, if I roll a d twenty to hit you with my to try to shoot you with my gun, I should also be able to roll a d twenty and do whatever my hacking thing is, or roll a d twenty and control my drone. Um, you do get into problems with vehicles because vehicles travel fast. They're they're even the even the most flimsiest of vehicles like motorcycles or something still have a little bit of armor protection. Um, they you really can't move them around a board because they because of their speed and they you know then you have the problem of um, controlling their actions and do they spin around? Do you have other people on the vehicle? Are you fighting against chasing or chasing? chasing or escaping from other people who have vehicles, what do the other players do? You could, in, in Star Trek, they do have a mechanic where you have someone who's in engineering, someone else who's in communications and sensors, someone else who, uh, the, you know, the engineering controls how much power goes to the engines. You have one person who's the captain who decides where all of the the numbers go basically you know how much energy do you put into the shields and all that kind of business who who who's the pilot and maneuvers the vehicle and that kind of thing but again it can be complicated so um in having everyone engaged for some reason so uh it behooves you to i know there's always going to be a player that wants to be a pilot or the driver or the, dr the drone operator and there's always going to be somebody who wants to be the specialist hacker uh, without any other skills. But I, it would behoove you to make sure that if that game system doesn't have a very good um, side system, don't let them have some of those skills, but let them be part and party of what the, the specifics of whatever you're trying to run. Okay, solar system, that was a preamble, sorry. Solar system, uh, what do I mean by solar system? Okay, it is the, uh, the exploration and colonization and exploitation of our own solar system. And so that's Earth, uh, the moon, um, the asteroid belt, the uh, Mars and Venus, uh, Mercury, uh, our own sun, and then all of the other planets and stellar objects uh, thereof. Uh, Dead Man and Storyteller says Shadowrun uses a chase mechanic and has since third edition. Oh, I don't mean uh, yes, yes, yes. Not not necessarily, uh, not specifically talking about the chase, but what do the players do during the chase? Right. If you have three or four players and one person is the the, the aerodyne driver, right? They're the, they're the 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 VTOL driver. They're the one piloting. The, the the helicopter, what do the other players do, uh, right? What roles do they get to play? Now, of course, you, you know, if you if you want to be real dynamic, you let them, you know, fire out the windows or hang off the, the, the edge of the wing or, you, you know, have their own vehicles to pilot as well and things like that. Like, you you really have to make sure you engage them because if, if the only person making die rolls is the pilot, uh, driver, et cetera, then what do the other players do if they don't have the ability to like fire out the windows? Let's say, for example, they're they're piling through a you know a jungle and there's automated systems trying to shoot at them. And it's just like, well, I get to make my piloting rolls. Yo, you guys just sit back and don't do anything, right? It's and I'm not saying it's it's good or bad. I'm saying like it's it's 
making sure that you don't lose interest from the other players and give them something to do if there's a way to do it or if that if if that gaming mechanic doesn't have that in it right um like pathfinder has a chase mechanic uh fifth edition dungeon dragons has a a chase style mechanic but it sometimes those mechanics don't aren't very inclusive it's like they work on paper but when you see it at the table people start to lose interest or they feel like their character isn't very effective. Um, it, it's like the hacker in a firefight, right? It, how effective is a hacker if they're the hacker specialist and they're, you, you know, they're the typical, like, you know, nerdy glass sitting in the background, pushing their glasses up on their nose. And then it's like the firefight breaks out and they're like, um, I'm in the middle of a jungle. I don't have anything to do, you know? And, and so you, you it, uh, that's definitely a session zero kind of thing. Uh, Foolish Kiwi says, not necessarily splitting the party, but having a ground team and an air team in the same encounter can still work as long as you devote time correctly. Right. And that's just a matter of um, of pacing, um, just like in your favorite movie or TV show. It's about flipping the action back and forth. Uh, for example, in the movie um, Star Wars, Rogue One, you know, a Star Wars story, right? You had some characters were the diversion and they were fighting the empire or uh, um, on the ground. And then you had a group that, that left where they landed and became, you know, had a diversion off into the jungle. And then you had the, the other characters trying to sneak into the, uh, the, the, the information tower to steal something. And then, you, and then you had the pilots in space, trying to uh, break through the force field that was around the world, right? So you had to flip back and forth between each grouping and the the editing, the pacing involved in that, how much time do you spend in each part is very important. So it's not a matter of that, like the game sucks. I'm, I'm not saying that any game system sucks. I'm saying that as a skill for a, a game master, it is just ensure that you have something for them to do or engage in, whether it's whether the, the people in the firefight are hanging off the edge of a stolen, uh, you know, mechanized robot or whether um, the hacker is able to, you know, hack into some automated guns so that they can join into the gunfight. Like just it, just ensuring that you pepper a little bit of things in there for them to do, especially if the the you know, the hacker who's not doing anything, it's like, what can I do? What can I do? And you're like, um, you see a remote panel that you have to go over to an interface in, and then you could r remotely activate some of their vehicles and have them crash into each other. It's like, oh, great, cool, I'll do that. While everybody else, you know, is firing from the, you know, the tree line or whatever the case may be. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, control, you know, have, let them control, um, you know, automated systems inside of a building or, or, or lock doors down or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Foolish Q says, give the hacker a little drone can help a lot, especially if they don't, especially if the character doesn't normally have one, right? Like if you're a character who has a drone and you have maybe a couple of weapons on the drone and you use it, that's, that's, yeah, you're engaged in a firefight too. Uh, if you don't normally have one, but, but, Basically, there's something automated around that the player can use as a drone, whether it's whether it's got propellers on it or not. Whether you know you could controlling a um, an armored personnel carrier and and controlling it remotely is still a drone of sorts, right? It can roll over enemies, knock down barriers, roll in front of PCs getting shot at, right, and become like cover. So you could really do something like that as well, you know. Um, uh, remotely controlling the helicopter or like that the, the armored personnel carrier and pop the doors open so an injured PC could jump inside of it and then go, you know, be, be, you know, be protected from gunfire and heal themselves or find a first aid kit inside of it. Like you can really do things like that. Um, if Foolish QE says a drone that can force Jack into other technology as well, right? Uh, whether remotely or the drone lands on something and can, can remotely control that just to give the player something to do. Uh, not, not, and of course, it, 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 all things in moderation, right? Um, you, the, the balance is do you give the, you know, the hacker a greater ability to cause more havoc than the other players? It's, it, it's just all a balance. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, but so 
when we talk about the solar system, let's get back to it because I'm, I'm squirreling. Um, the, the, the solar system, I think oftentimes the, the stories that are often told about our solar system are very small, right? Um, the, the Martian is, is the, uh, the, the Matt Damon uh, movie where he lands on Mars and then has to survive or gravity. Someone goes in, a, in the outer space and an accident happens and then a, a series of accidents happen and they have to survive. So a lot of solar system stories are told with uh, very small groups of people landing somewhere as colonists and something happens. Uh, you, you, you know, so the oxygen runs out, there's something pierces the hull, uh, food starts to run out, or someone goes crazy in their little hovel or whatever have you um, after colonizing. But I think what tends to not be, tends to not be explored, yeah, the expanse is, I was just gonna go to the expanse, thank you, dead man. Um, uh, the expanse is one of the best examples of a fully realized uh, solar system society in which you have different people and cultures, um, different stratas of society, whether they're space miners, space elevators, um, spaceships that float around, the, the realities of having a space station impacted by a, um, a meteor strike moving at 50,000 miles a second or something. Um, yeah, The Expanse is great for that. And I think that there's plenty of opportunity to just explore our own solar system in your own world setting, right? You could have a thing where Earth is empty, i.e. Um, uh, 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 like a uh, a problem happened on Earth, whether it's uh, riots, the, the nanotechnology was released, a, a plague was released, uh, wars, and then people have moved to Mars and Venus, and maybe the people on Mars are fighting over the territory of, of collecting Earth back for them, and then Venus wants it for themselves or something. And then you have all of the societies of the space stations. Usually in a lot of these stories, there's basically one space station, but in an expanse, there's plenty of space stations in various stages of, uh, of disrepair and, and uh, excellence. And you could have plenty of space stations from little tiny um, zero gravity uh, tubes to um, O'Neill cylinders and hollowed out asteroids in, in, the, in our um, uh, asteroid belt to colonizing, you know, having millions of people in different colonies on, Earth, on Mars' surface uh, up to uh, things such as um, gas stations where uh, spaceships have to come across gas giants and and refuel by you know scooping in materials off of the 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 gas giant um, uh, surfaces and I think we could really use while I'm not a big proponent of being hyper realistic I think there's many of elements in, in our own solar system that I think you could mine uh, for for uh, for greater uh, storytelling things like, you know, having a gas giant and, and mining the, the gases around it or finding um, uh, asteroids that, you know, where there's diamonds and platinum inside of it and mining it for that or, or finding a comet and do comet farming and the PCs have to uh, gather the ice from comets and, and because water is very, is extremely important in a, uh, interstellar society and and the people that fight it, uh, against that uh, debris, space debris, and having the dangers of going into and out of certain orbits and and uh, being impacted by the space debris and radiation, solar flares, um, zero gravity and and microgravity. So you have like where essentially, you know, we we know scientifically there really is no such thing as zero gravity. Uh, there's always large bodies that are, are pressing gravity against something, although the amount of gravity would be very slight based on how far away you are from it. But in, in essence, you, you know, a zero gravity environment and exploring what that would be like. Um, I would love to see like a zero gravity sword fight, <laughs> you know, people bouncing off of walls inside of a, a zero gravity habitat slicing at each other or zero gravity grappling, you know, jujitsu, 
Um, because without leverage, they would have to learn a different way of using it. I think that would be awesome. Uh, you wouldn't want to have a zero gravity uh, gunfight <laughs> because the, you wouldn't want those uh, th those projectiles punching through the the hull. But you know that brings up other other problems as well. You know, and then the the social impact of living in a interstellar society. You know, do it. Does everyone speak the same languages? Um, are there are there certain are there certain behaviors that would normally be ex uh, acceptable or new behaviors that we wouldn't think of? For example, um, recycling would be absolutely paramount. 99.9% .9 of all people in space would, re would recycle on the norm because materials are hard to find. Whereas, you know, in our present day, we're just like, well, just throw it in the trash. Where, you know, dumping it out in space is not a smart thing to do. And destroying someone else's spaceship might not be a smart thing as well when it's it's far more productive and uh f f you know you you get more out of it if you steal from them rather than destroy it uh dead man storyteller says most asteroids are are c carbonaceous and uh, c type so they would be very high in diamond count um and scott post says always bring gravity boots to a zero g fight yeah <laughs> but you know with, with the the asteroid mining right um who owns space, right? We even today, although we have a limited treaties on how we handle space, once you send corporations and rich uh, entrepreneurs and criminals and thieves and military and you, you know uh, all kinds of factions in space, who owns it? So, you, and then how valuable is something? Are diamonds? If you found a diamond the size of a of a small vehicle, how how valuable would it be? Would it would it be would it be worth hundreds of billions of dollars, or would it be worthless because it's in your way and we don't use it, right? So, and then who owns it? And then how do you keep it when you own it? So, yay! I I went in the, the grab. You know, our party goes out in space and we find a an asteroid that's filled with like diamond and platinum and iron and all kinds of things. And we planted our flag on it and we're, we're standing there doing our hips hand fists on the hip superhero pose. Now, how do you own it when somebody else comes along and I don't know, sends three robotic drones on it to start mining it when you leave, leave it, or do you stay there or do you have the resources to, to plant your rear end on it? so that no one else takes it? Do you send a beacon out to alert people that it's yours? Uh, do you hide your presence that you've gotten there? Um, one one of the things, uh, I listened to Isaac Arthur, um, check out Isaac Arthur's um, uh, um, um, YouTube channel, but a lot of things is that uh, stealth in space is extremely difficult because most spacecraft um, and even individuals leave heat patterns, radiation trails, ion trails, like it's very hard. So is it very, you know, how hard would it be for you to keep this secret of yours? And then who's to stop five other factions from uh, exploring the same location that you found your asteroid, right? So, and what, what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. What I'm, what I'm coming up with are stories, um, encounters, obstacles, problems, complications. And I think those are things that I think we could really mine for um, in using our own solar system. And really basically just doing a lot of, a lot of a wiki, wiki, wiki foo and, and, um, you know, Google Kata <laughs> and and finding out different places in our own solar system, like the, all the moons around Saturn and the fact that um, most of the moons around Jupiter are like damn near the size of, uh, of our moon and Earth, you know, why Pluto was demoted because it, in Pluto's orbit, there's other plant, um, orbital, um, uh, I, I guess you call them, uh, uh, locations uh things in space that are just what is it karen or charon is uh almost the same size as pluto as well and then we really don't have a size category you know once you go down from planet what's what's between planet and moon right because a moon orbits another planetary object but what if you have an asteroid the size of our moon or larger and and then you know, all those kinds of things right foolish kiwi says maybe in this universe planets are 
flat. <laughs> Kidding, I couldn't help it, but start a pot. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you, you know, uh, I think even Isaac Arthur talks about creating a flat um, stellar object, interstellar object or something. It was crazy. Uh, but yeah, a dead man says dwarf planets. Yeah. I mean, the, and living in and around dwarf planets, um, how much space can they hold? Right. So Earth Earth is large, but we but 70 percent of it is water. So we don't live on the entire surface of Earth. Whereas when you start colonizing like the moon and Pluto and Mars, um, hell, trying to colonize Mercury or shit, even Venus or something like that, these these planetary surfaces, Mars has more ground surface for us to inhabit than Earth does unless we start really maybe Earth expands into the oceans. And then you have yourself um, the, uh, the, the, the planetary objects around Saturn, uh, Io and Europa and Titan. Uh, and and I'm, I'm probably mixing shit. I'm mixing ones around Jupiter and Saturn, whatever. But the point is that there's some that we feel um, are tectonically active. So you have maybe 10 to 60 miles of ice and then the core is just liquid. So do you have um, an aquatic world inside the icy layer of a, you know, a moon out there? And then what about the gravity that impacts you? Is it, you know, would you have people that are adapted to high gravity and low gravity? Um, would low gravity adapted people have monkey hands? I don't know. What would you call, what's the what are hands on you where your feet should be, right? Would they be called fans? Um, heat, I don't know. Uh, feety hands, uh, uh, foot digits, you know, would, would, would people be adapted to that? Would they want to be adapted to that? Uh, that kind of thing. I don't, I don't want to flow too much into the, into the, the transhumanist thing, but e even so, if we're just normal humans, you, you know, we still have personal technology, cyber technology, biotechnology that we could use uh, to allow us to survive in some of these places. Pre prehensile feet? Yeah, prehensile feet I, I probably is, is the best way to describe it. And maybe spacecraft that are controlled with prehensile feet. So uh, a person without them might have a diff more difficult time piloting one of these ships. Uh, Azala says prehensile feet are nice, but I prefer normal human ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, who, who, who's to say what's normal? Oh, uh, yeah, like in Aeonflux the movie. Yes, absolutely. And for those who don't know, there was a live-action Aeonflux movie, and there was a character in it who had prehensile feet and was, was actually quite acrobatic in as well. Um, thank you, Deadman. Uh, and, and so I, I believe that our own solar system has lots of space, <laughs> um, not being sarcastic, for us to explore plenty of stories, whether the PCs, the PCs could be criminals, they could be agents for a government, they could be agents for their own faction. You can have isolationists um, that have their own habitats and have their own quirky or dark or mysterious or just strange behaviors. Uh, we already have people who are extremists and uh, cultists and uh, people who would love to separate themselves from the rest of society. Uh, just imagine how inbred they would be living in their own uh, orbital uh, habitats and such. Uh, Azal says, of course, prehensile feet and eclipse phase isn't that good, depending on how much walking you have to do. Uh, that's, well, the whole point of it would be low gravity and zero gravity, right? In zero gravity, prehensile feet uh, would you would maximize their effectiveness and wearing shoes might not be. Uh, I remember reading um, Voice of the Whirlwind and oh, there's another it's Walter John Williams book or uh, where in space, there's no dirt to walk on. So most people wear slippers or they go barefoot or they have Velcro slippers um, or like the magnetic boots. Uh, or suction cup boots might be a thing. So it, because in space, there, why would you import dirt or concrete, right? Um, <laughs> uh, yes, sure thing, bollocks. You can do whatever you want, man. Have coffee on me.
Um, yeah, this this is my coffee, I guess. <laughs> so, so that's the thing. But yeah, in science fiction, we often, you know, we often relate it to like, hey, um, I'm just walking around because we think of artificial gravity, which could or could not exist, or depending on where you go, there might be artificial gravity, like spin gravity or not, right? So you could you could have like um hollowed out asteroids that are spun for gravity, whereas you might have um, habitats that they don't want gravity or portions of the habitat do not have gravity. Um, spindles come to mind, the big rings, spindle rings where the, the ring spins and the spinning ring creates gravity, but the, the middle of the spindle uh, has zero gravity as you go to the out, outer portion of the ring that's where the gravity is at um kiwi says there's a free sci-fi game that includes all of these less known places like Ceres, titan europa etc taking place in the far future of our solar system called a uh, warframe it worth a shout out warframe oh man a uh, warframe is a I, I i don't believe it's a highly rated video game but like you said it does include all these places like Ceres and titan and europa and there's plenty of those places that i i believe are ignored once we start talking faster than light travel because oftentimes it's like earth faster than light travel done right and we ignore neptune we ignore uh, uh we ignore uranus because we always ignore my anus right so but anyway you know all the jokes about uranus and and saturn and you know neptune and things like that um the rings exploring the rings on saturn and mining that so um, Azal says there's also the perpetually naked aliens, but humans still have to wear clothes on the climate controlled, highly advanced ships. Save on water, go naked. Well, uh, Azala, actually, I'm not against, um, I'm actually with you, right? When, 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 um, interstellar society starts to expand, um, you know, certain assumptions about living on earth would disappear. Right, because would we have rain or snow any longer? No, it would be climate controlled. Um, you, you, you know, would what would you wear? How would you act with around each other? Um, I suppose you would have some kind of clothing because you'd need pockets and equipment and carry tools and things. So loincloths would probably be a thing, but I don't know, nakedness with males and females probably would disappear because you would be in such close proximity. Um, after a while, you would just be like, nah, you would just, after a while, it, it wouldn't be a thing any longer. Um, Zala says, I've been playing Warframe a lot lately. Yeah. Kiwi says, it used to be a bad game, but they completely overhauled it, um, uh, hold, hold it over the years. Um, yeah, and, and again, what they did is try to explore some of those little known areas. Um, there's, there's a ton of asteroids that have names that are in our own asteroid belt that exists between Earth orbit and Mars orbit, right? Or is it Mar beyond Mars's orbit? Someone, someone, correct me on that. Uh, where, where the? Because I, I, I don't have my, uh, I don't have my stellar map nearby. Anyway, um, uh, Dead Man Storyteller says, or Taurus habitats, a ring of connected habitats, and there's plenty of habitats that are, I think would, would be fun to like explore slash destroy. You know what I mean? Like, um, oh, it's between Mars and Jupiter. Thank you, Tesla. Uh, dead man, you should have been on that. Failing on that. Bad dead man, bad. No, I'm just messing with you, dude. Um, no, seriously, I ain't messing with you. But um, <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, the sarcasm is not lost on me. <laughs> um, anyway, but uh, Dead Man brings up the the Taurus habitats, right? So, okay, um, let's do let's do a real quick. Um, let's see if we can encapsulate a ton of different habitats. Okay, so we have tin cans. Tin cans are what we're using today. So, a tin can is basically a zero gravity thing. Everyone lives on the inside of it. There's no gravity. Um, usually, they're not very big. Then we have um, tin cans spun. spun. So you spin the tin can and the larger you make it, the greater you can have the gravity on the outside of the tin can. So instead of a tin can with like three people, you have a tin can that can hold 10,000 people. In essence, a hollowed out asteroid, you spin it and then you can grow grass and have lakes and things on the outside of it. And when you look up, you're actually looking up 
at the inner surface of of uh, like a hollowed out asteroid. Then there's um, a built tin, um, hollowed out asteroid, which would be like an O'Neill cylinder. So it's basically a giant cylinder. You spin it, you live on the inside. Now to get sunlight, there are some cylinders that have land, um, like a candy, nah, candy cane is the wrong way to think of it. Uh, imagine stripes, but the stripes are clear glass alloy and then land and then clear glass alloy and then more land and clear get glass alloy and then more land. So you have a, a bottle that spins and the clear glass allows stellar light to pass through it. So each continent would basically be a strip of like rectangular land based on how, and then based on how big it is, it would allow light through it. And then there's the idea of, um, of, of course, the Taurus, right? Um, which is what Dead Man brings up, which is the, um, the the classic idea of a spinning top where you have rings and you can stack rings. So you could have multiple rings, each ring representing something, whereas you could have farming or medical or um, uh, engineering and uh, the rich habitat and the vacation ring or what have you and uh, storage. And then you could have those rings spin for You could even have air with zero gravity, um, and and then of course have what uh, Dead Man uh, brings uh, brings up a ring of connected habitats. So you could have a central spire that spins, and then you could have habitats attached to it, which might be the way um, spaceships can get gravity. So you could have these large ships that may detach and attach to um, an orbital spire and the whole thing spins and then everyone gets their own gravity. And then even in eclipse phase, there is the uh, geodesic. A geodesic is, I, I know I'm going off. A geodesic is a big giant um, dome, not dome, a big giant orb with struts that connect everything. And then everyone lives inside the sphere and attaches to the to the spurs that keep the sphere a circle. Uh, okay, um, Azala says I like I, I like to see someone like an engineer who needs to carry a lot of stuff and might get dirty or deal with sharp moving parts wearing a jumpsuit. But in Starfinder, all showers and ships are communal. Yeah, I mean that's a thing, right? Like there wouldn't be we, society in space would change, and the hangups of nakedness and sexuality would probably fade away because as colonists, it, the first colonists would have to get the hell over it, right? So the first 10 colonists, the first 100 colonists, the first 1,000 colonists, um, the, 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 the idea of using communal showers would be a thing because uh, space would be at a premium and you're just like, get the hell over it, man. Move over, move over to the side. Come on, lady. Move, look, I'm just trying to, you know, wash my gonads here. And then how would they, people deal with that? They'd be sleeping on top of each other and things. So I, I you know, that would fade away and uh, washing things would, would or would not be a, be a thing. Um, people would sweat their own body would flake off things, but they wouldn't necessarily get dirty from the outside. Well, grease. Uh, yeah. Okay. I see grease. And then, but you always hear the idea of like the sonic shower head, or you have to zip yourself into a bag or a tube so that any kind of moisture or water or way to clean yourself would be recycled and stuff. So yeah, and you could think of all those things as well. Uh, Foolish Kiwi says, ooh, maybe the stellar glass is tinted and only lets different spectrums of light through allowing different biomes and plants to thrive. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's and, and that's the real thing, right? Like you could, you could have a habitat that allows like certain types of ultraviolet light through and or or enhance light to allow it to pass through um i don't know what it would be i guess clear aluminum or come up with some material that is clear uh, if you if you do some google imaging you can come up with uh habitats that are like strangely shaped or go oh i hadn't thought about that and 
Uh, <laughs> Dog says, I like the idea of climate control jumpsuits. Think air conditioned um, undies, DBJ. <laughs> yeah, no, but that would be a thing, right? I mean, especially if you are living in a space habitat that isn't fully, um, that's more explorative. People would just re remain in their spacesuits, and their spacesuits would just be like like self cleaning. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, spacesuits would have recycling things. You know, you'd have the, you know, you'd have the uh, the tube up your um your bum bum and and hoo hoo and ha ha and and um who's the what's it's you know you would just go to the bathroom in your suit and just re recycle. Uh, hell, in in Dune, the the uh, Fremen wore those skin suits, and the skin suits would you would. It had a recycling thing where you would drink your own uh, urine and sweat. And to us, we go, oh, that's disgusting. But in space, they actually drink their own recycled urine, right? Filters out all the impurities, leaves the water left, and you drink it. So that would be a thing. Um, now, depending on how big the habitat is and how, um, what would you say, how settled the habitat is as well, People wouldn't always walk around in, in spacesuits. Maybe, I w maybe it would it would start to reduce down to jumpsuits. You know, so the classic space suit where all you have to do is attach your helmet and you can survive in a vacuum might be in you know more engineering or colonist settings. Whereas, you know, uh, the the fifth you know habitat on on a Martian. Uh, built a dome built over the the fifth Martian um, impact crater, and another million people live there. You know, you're probably walking around in regular clothing and probably just slippers or something like that, unless they left it dirty and dirt instead of maybe growing grass or something instead of roads or whatever. And you come up with so many other things, such as um, how deeply do you like we, we're talking about habitats floating in space, but there's also planetary habitats, right? Um, dome cities over uh, impact craters, um, cities built down into the crevices, uh, giant crevices, like, you, you know, um, vertical cities that are easy because the, the gravity is light. Uh, we have orbital rings, right? Where you you could build a ring around a moon and then launch off of that. I mean, even in Isaac Arthur's um, uh, series, you know, the, uh, a great way to leave Earth would be to build a giant orbital ring around Earth, take a space elevator up to the orbital ring. The ring is spinning, logistically spinning faster than the planet Earth. So you could launch a ship by just detaching it off the edge of the ring. And then the ship would go flying because Earth is spinning so fast, the ring is bigger than Earth, the ring is spinning fast, and it would just launch a ship off into space. So you have all of those those complications to deal with. And I, I would love to deal with the I the the complication of having a running a running a gunfight inside of a like a spinning habitat where the the edge of your vision spins, I mean goes upwards instead of the horizon disappearing downwards you you so in in other words someone could run away from you and you actually might get a better shot at them as they run away from you and curve upwards and it depends on how big the habitat is right but they curve upwards so you get a better shot at the roof of their vehicle maybe while you're chasing them because the, they're curving upwards or something uh, th that would be kind of odd but that'd be kind of cool too um <laughs> uh, Bog says, dig this, vibrating suits attuned to chakra points for keeping the body and mind integrated most effectively and efficiently, working on this idea right now. Oh, someone, oh, you've taken it to like a spiritual level. Um, wh whether real or not, I would presume people would do that anyway, right? That is a, people wouldn't lose their spirituality simply because they, they are in space, uh, I think that would be a thing. Um, and and if it's true, that could be your reason for having um, very minor up to major, like maybe psionic abilities in your world. Um, maybe people are able to put themselves in, in suspended animation or uh, read people's thoughts by touching, touching their head or um, 
separating their consciousnesses and things like that. Uh, if we want to go really crazy with it, uh, yeah. And Foolish Kiwi says, uh, uh, "Cool for space monks." Yeah, I absolutely believe that. Um, uh, I, <laughs> Bollock says, "I use um by um um by uh, neurals and they work." Hypnosis is the threat. DBJ hence the suits. Oh, I see. I, it's like a. It's it's the use of. It would be using technology for self hypnosis. I'm assuming, um, it, or what you're getting at, or wh whatever the hell. We're we're all talking. We're throwing out ideas. So, uh, hell yeah, I, I did, definitely. <laughs> flat Earth, no flat universe theory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but. Um, yeah, we don't want to piss off the flat earthers, man. Um, but but the I the um hence the idea that you could okay, so what kind of adventures could we have here, right? Um, I love I love the idea of of ex the explorative nature of it, um, meaning not exploring like uh we're, we're gonna explore another world, but I mean like um needing you, you know having a mission where you have to walk use your magnetic boots and walk on the outside of a habitat to break into it or um, hanging on the, the outer skin of a, of a spacecraft when it comes into um, when it's starting to dock or having to travel across the, 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 the desert like expanse of Mars to get to another habitat or using a tunneling machine in the moon to get to someplace else or having you, you know, having a firefight or something with an enemy and then finding out that a solar flare has gone out and everyone has to, you know, get into their radiation tents or go into their radiation domes or rooms or whatever, kind of like a, uh, like safe rooms. And everyone's going there, but two people who hate each other that want to kill each other are there with a bunch of other people, but you don't want to have a gunfight <laughs> in the middle of like these little tight little rooms. So, you know, you, you might have to, you know, you might be eyeballing the other person like, mm. but you know, I brought up one time when we were talking about um, uh, on during future Fridays that messing with the, the HVAC system, the, the um, messing with the, 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 Wow, my brain just went messing with the uh, the homeostatic air and water and um, systems, life support systems in a habitat might be a um, that might be um, a capital offense, right? Just playing with it, not even just trying to sabotage it, but just like 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 messing with how the the pumping something through the air ducts or whatever, which might sound cool for a spy might I would say that would be a capital offense because you could kill everyone on a habitat and they might just take that quite seriously. The dog says to shield people from succumbing to hypnosis and chi attack by predators, the suit keeps the chakra point stabilized. Oh, from outside influences. I get it. Okay, that's cool. I, I like that idea. Um and and that might be a thing, right? Where especially if you have high enough technology well, that'll have to be, we'll, we'll do that for tomorrow. Cause you might have AI that has high enough technology that they can read people well enough to essentially hypnotize them. We'll, we'll get into that in the, um, memetics, but we'll get into that. A full human says going to Pluto only to realize they revoked planet status to push it away from public attention because it has some insane resource or life form or back bacteria. <laughs> Bollocks is just saying, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, the 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 <laughs> the idea that you know the 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 downsizing of Pluto because there's something going on there and and that's space is huge right there's a lot of traveling around our solar system might not be as efficient as we would like it especially if we don't have faster than light travel so evil experiments, experimenting on innocent people, cloning uh, experiments, um, uh, experimenting on AI, um, uh, trying to put down, maybe there's a mutiny or there's a riot or something and trying to put that down would be very difficult because it would, ex the colonization of space would be like the exploration of our world during the exploration times, right? You, you we, we might, culturally diverge so much 
that we might be meeting new cultures when we go to different places. And we might not know what dangers we find when we arrive on yet another one of the other moons of Saturn, even though we live, we might live around Saturn, but getting to another moon, if it takes two weeks to get there, a hell of a lot can happen in two weeks. Hell, even if it takes uh, eight hours, once, once something happens on a space station, eight hours later, there's a lot that can happen. So um, we, you could even flow horror into this, uh, which kind of comes up, right? Where, you know, the, the horror of finding a, a, a habitat that's like half empty and the life support's barely running and something has, has gotten loose and someone sends out a distress signal, uh, definitely a, a great opportunities for storytelling. A uh, Fool's Kiwi says a new planet or giant object entering our solar system in an oddly peaceful <laughs> integrated orbit. No, no crashing into Earth, but um, eerily uh, making a, a blot in our sky. Yeah, and who's to say where it came from? Could it be alien? Could it be something that we created? Possibly. Um, and what if? If we explore our own solar system, why wouldn't other aliens explore their own solar systems? Because oftentimes, because I'm really talking pre faster than light travel, right? Like there might be very powerful ion or fusion or nuclear engines, whatever, powered engines or something like that, uh, contra gravity or whatever have you, right? So we might have efficient methods to travel around our solar system. Um, you know, slingshotting your way around the sun or or using Jupiter's gravity to slingshot you might get you places from between uh, weeks and months all the way up to maybe hours. Uh, and you could arrange it somewhere in there based on your setting. But one of the things that we, we really tend to forget is, is why don't aliens have their own, why don't they have 37 habitats and have you know um, spread around their own solar system long before they got faster than light travel? And what, tomorrow we're going to talk about transhumanism. Why would aliens look like aliens, right? When you have AI, you have drones, you have mechanical beings, you have things like maybe the first aliens we meet aren't aliens at all. It could be their it could be something they artificially created, or maybe they've modified their bodies just like we would probably modify ours. So there might get to the point where we don't, where we're not human anymore by the time we leave our own galaxy. I mean, our own solar system, I'm sorry. So, and then of course there will be people, one, once technology gets uh, efficient enough, why wouldn't people travel to, out to the Oort cloud and beyond, even if it did take a long time? So there would be seed ships, I, I believe, that would leave, but it might take them 20 years, 100 years, 1,000 years to reach someplace else. Um, uh, Foolish Kiwi says, I know it's, it's also kind of far future, but um, if in your setting, if in your setting, the tech never got to the point where we left our own system, one where the sun is going out would be interesting and existential. And, and that's the real thing, right? <laughs> The, the longer our lives are and the more we we expand out, um, once we live longer, our Earth, like our sun is going to go out. The Earth will fall into the sun. The sun will explode, right? That's, that's a given. How or when it will happen, I don't know, 50 million years, a billion years, who knows? Um, a thousand years, you know, we don't, we know, I just don't know offhand, I'm not going to, Google it, but that will happen. The, the the thing is, once we expand in our own solar system, will we start to will it will we start to eat ourselves, right? Like who gets to decide who lives and dies? How what projects would exist? How will we would we deal with those projects? Um it, you know, how do you move a, a billion billion people? Uh would we expand, like, would we uh, overpopulate our own solar system is a, is a possibility. That would be kind of cool and interesting. Um, would the, would Earth be uh, stripped of its natural resources um, or be left as a museum? Uh, all those kind of things. How many habitats would we build? Would there be people who would 
who would say that we're 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 taking too many resources out of our solar system. Um, water is a uh, extremely important thing that we need to live with. How much water, frozen water, is available to us, whether through comets or frozen in the the icy surfaces of other planets? Like, how much is there, and would we use it all up? It's a thing as well. Azala says, I'd st uh, it'd still be interesting and existential seeing your home planet about to be destroyed. Even if most of humanity is out among the stars, Earth is still where we came from. Uh, definitely, absolutely, right? Um, th there might be Earth firsters, <laughs> you know, Earth first with the, with a, you know, wearing, um, you know, Earth bracelets or Earth tattoos, right? Um, uh, uh, Foolish Kiwi says, imagine being the last archaeologist going back to discover lost history weeks before the Earth is swallowed into the sun. Ooh, yeah, having to collect all those important artifacts and things or histories. Um, yeah, goofy but neat. Yeah, it, it, would, it would be. And and you you'd, you would have to rationalize, like, how far in technology would we have before that would happen? Um, yeah, dog says, obviously we got to terraform if we stay. And, and that's, that's something Neil deGrasse Tyson brought up, you know, like, could we, could we terraform Mars so we could live on it without, you know, um, with maybe just a gas mask or a uh, skin suit? Could we terraform Venus in a place that we could live? And he's like, well, if we could do that, why wouldn't we just terraform earth back to the way we want it or, or terraform earth into any way we want you know, it's like, well, why wouldn't we do that? Uh, you know, it's possible. Um, but yeah, the, uh, w would there be Earth firsters that don't want to terraform other places and that we should live on Earth? Um, you would have people, maybe eco terrorists. You could have uh, corporations that want to exploit certain things before this happens. For example, uh, there might be people who want to live, um, leave on seed ships. Um, and cannibalize small moons to do it. Uh, there, there might even be people who might be like, "Hey, the moon is, has great, uh, has a lot of resources. Why don't we just chop up the moon?" You know, um, Foolish Kiwi says, "Oof, maybe the campaign goes the opposite way, and we pick a planet to build a giant shield around with UV lights inside. Uh, someone's heading towards Dyson spheres." Um, Azala says, "We, we kind of are terraforming Earth, just not in a good way." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, plastic bottle city. <laughs> um, Bollock says, I'm uh, pretty sure we will man the earth at some point and, and break orbit. Um, that's a, that's also a possibility too, right? Where we could literally move planetary systems, um, uh, move them out of orbit, uh, using whatever kinds of, uh, engines or gravity wells, or, um, if, if we're able to harness enough energy to do so, to move something. Yeah, moving the Earth like a spaceship, yep. Yeah, it's a possibility. Um, how to maintain life on it when you move away from your sun, um, how to keep it spinning for gravity, uh, maintaining light and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, folks, it's um, Exactamundo. Thank you, dogs. Uh, <laughs> as always, have a city called The Helm. Yeah, um, in, the, in the book uh, Ring World, there was an alien species known as the puppeteers and they created a uh, Rosetta, which was five planets, all five planets rotating. And then those five planets rotated around a central point. So they used the gravity of the five rotating planets to keep the rotating planets in motion. And then they moved them out of their own galaxy, uh, their own solar system so that they could live. And the reason was because they knew the galactic core would, would explode in 50,000 years. And the puppeteers were extremely paranoid and they were like, we're, we're, we're getting the hell out of here. And the, the human that he was talking to was like, you know what? You guys are right. Because how do you move a thousand billion people? How do you move a million billion people that are already settled, right? You would have to move the whole planet or move multiple planets to do it. Like you would have to have, you you might have to have a whole planet just for uh, farming and resources to feed all the other people, If getting depending on how big of a population you want to get. But we're getting way, way, way out, far beyond what I was thinking. Um, the, uh, thinking about uh, Foolish Kiwi says, thinking about a planet diving is terrifying. I don't even trust people on the freeway in front of my... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. 
Yeah, a couple of drinks. Let's go pilot this planet. Oh, to the left. Oops. <laughs> yeah, how, how do you even get a license for that? <laughs> planet racing, NASCAR experience. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're going way way out there. Yeah, but hey, when if we if we ever get to the point where we live forever, we become immortal. We're gonna have to think about that, right? Like if once immortality becomes a real thing, theoretically, there's no safe place in the universe. Uh, every star at some point will explode and send out its radiation, right? Um, the black holes will begin to exist. The expanding of the, of the universe will happen. So that would be kind of kind of interesting thing to think about. So um, yeah, let's let's bring it let's bring it back down to earth a little bit. Um, we've hit the hour mark. We're, we're bringing it back. We're just talking about exploring our own um, solar system. There's so many places that are named that we could explore, whether there's uh, asteroids and planets and things like that. So a uh, Pluto, <laughs> foolish Kiwi, there you are with Pluto again. Uh, Pluto comes to, comes in champion again, small but fast. You know where my bets are. will be in the Derby. <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, Pluto's one of, one of the fastest moving because it's moving around the, the outer edge. Usually the thing moving around the outer edge tends to tends to be one of the fastest moving. So if it's moving at the same rate as the one on the inside. But anyway, guys, um, I'm DBJ. Thank you for joining me. Tomorrow we're going to talk about transhumanism uh, going into the f far future. Uh, Tesla Ranger says, when someone's uh, driving a planet-sized object, oops, it's not a word you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, hell no. Yeah. The, 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 I don't, I don't think you're going to call state farm when you have an impact. It's just like, Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to hit a pothole or anything. I guess, I guess it would be hitting a wormhole, get your planet stuck in a wormhole and got to got to back up back and forth to get it out of there. <laughs> anyway, guys, you guys have a good one. Um, got to get ready for work. Uh, everybody have a great day. I will see thee tomorrow. Thanks for joining me.